I just finished a game jam to create a real Game Boy ROM. It was a lot of fun. A Game Boy game sounds hard, I hear you say, and you'd be correct, but this actually wasn't the first Game Boy game I've made. The whole cinematic timeline is all screwed up with this video actually coming before the first project. You've seen how the game turned out, but let's see how it actually came to be. The game jam ran for three months. I found it with only 13 days remaining, and let me tell you, I made it count. The game was made using the ZGB engine. The first step was to modify the ZGB tutorial. Actually, all I did was delete the walls and disable the enemy movement. Okay, now it at least looks like a spiky ball. Time to make it move. My goal was to make a game with an individually controlled player and weapon. This isn't exactly what I was going for. Let's see. Alright, it's definitely looking better now. Ideally, the ball should appear as if it has some weight behind its movement. Finally, I've settled on this movement. Is it the same as before? Maybe, but I worked on it for a few hours so who knows at this point. Now it would be nice if I could actually see the spike go off screen. I created three different camera modes, one to track the player, one to track the ball, and one to track the center point between the two of them. So here's what we got by the end of day two. I changed the spike ball to look more like a ninja star. It was easier to animate, and its animation speed is now directly tied to how fast it's moving. I also have a rough icon down here to indicate whether you are controlling the player or the ninja star. The last thing was a very quick floor pattern just to give us a sense of space. Day 3 is here and it's time to work on some bosses. I spent the morning planning out some attacks and bosses, but didn't get real far. I decided to just jump right into it. Here is the start of the snake boss. His head wanders around and bounces off of walls. Hmm, this is a little closer to a snake than before. Check it out, it's working now. Change a plus into a minus and that makes a huge difference in the code apparently. It looks sick, but still isn't much of a game yet. A couple of hours later and we're finally starting to resemble my vision for the game. My vision. The boss can only be damaged on his tail and only if the ninja star is at maximum speed. The ninja star will also recoil off the boss when hit. Day 4 is here and let's see where we ended yesterday. Besides the victory screen, this fight is fully functional. The boss has a basic health bar and will flash red to indicate he's been hit. He gets really fast at 2 health. Come on, come on. Ah, I, w I was so close. Okay, so maybe the difficulty needs a little tweaking. It was time to work on the next boss. This time it would be some kind of eyeball that shoots lasers. The first thing I did was obviously update the boss health bar because I have a hard time focusing on what I should be doing. Here is the art for the boss. The eyeball is part of the background tiles and the pupil is a separate sprite that will be able to move around. Here, it's a lot easier to visualize with the pupil actually moving. By now I've wasted enough time on the art and really need to get to his mechanics. After what has felt like forever, we finally have the start to one of the attacks. The eye will now teleport to your location, forcing you to move. Besides it being way too fast, it is functional. The background tiles are correctly changed to the target icon and revert back when the eye teleports away. It's now day 5 and I've somehow went backwards. The boss teleports to all the proper attack locations, but the target tiles are no longer removed from the background. Surprisingly, this wasn't too difficult to fix. The issue was that I was doing the steps out of order. I was drawing the target on the screen and then storing the tiles which would result in restoring the target art to the background rather than the floor art. I needed to store the tiles first so after the eye teleports the floor pattern would be restored correctly. With the teleporting out of the way let's finish this boss. And here we go. He turned out, well, actually extremely boring. He was supposed to shoot multiple lasers, but I was running into some sprite limitations. This one laser per teleport just stinks. Part of this limitation comes from the four sprites that make up the eye's hitbox. My first idea was to rapidly move one hitbox each frame. It would be impossible for the player to pass through an entire box in three frames or less. Ultimately, that didn't help. 
Who knows, maybe I'm trying to push the Game Boy a little too hard. Day 6 is here and with it comes some incredible news. The eye is able to fire multiple bullets. Turns out that one bullet is out and eight bullets are in. The issue is not a sprite limitation, but rather I was corrupting the memory. I wish I had a better clip to show you, but it refused to corrupt again the same way. Anyways, here's how the new eye works. He's so much better than yesterday. The last thing I worked on was a complete overhaul of the background assets. Now, all of the bosses are fought inside dungeons. Why dungeons? Well, why not? They're a lot more interesting than a grassy field, you know, since one of the bosses is a snake. I joked in the start of this video that the cinematic timeline is all messed up, and I wasn't kidding. Some upcoming videos are a Game Boy demake of my indie game, Pokemon Go as a Game Boy game, and either Sonic or Luigi's Mansion as a Game Boy game. If any of those sound interesting to you, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified. Also, let me know in the comments if there's any game you'd like to see as a Game Boy game since I'm open to suggestions. Finally, once I start hitting more consistent view numbers, I'd love to try designing a game solely out of your comments. So please look forward to that. It's now day 7 and there are only 8 days remaining in the game jam. The next boss to work on was the frog boss. In this fight, there would be a fly that would also chase the player. The issue I was running into is that you can't move towards the player without using square root or trigonometry functions, both of which aren't available on the Game Boy. Older systems would use a lookup table for trig functions. It's basically a list of predefined outputs for specific inputs. I spent two hours figuring out how to use arctangent to find the angle and I finally got it a trigonometry free way of finding the angle from one point to the other. Let's apply it to the fly. Whoa, it's like half right. It does sometimes follow the player, sometimes it doesn't. It does move cool if that's what I was going for though. Anyways, let's see about fixing it. So the fly will now track the player if it's nearby, otherwise it will go in straight lines until it is near again. Sounds like you just didn't fully fix it, I hear you say. Shh, it's a feature. Day 8. It's now day 9 because day 8 was a complete bust. All of the basic tiles for the map have been created and imported into the game. Minus some tweaks, the overworld will look like this. Oops, that's not supposed to happen. I wanted the water to be animated so I drew the tiles and loaded them in. Ah, crap. It's loading garbage tiles. A lot of time was spent waiting for help in the Discord channel. It's now day 10, and is anyone else getting sick of me mentioning the days? Anyways, the boss doors have been spruced up with portals. Entering a portal takes you to the corresponding boss. Speaking of bosses, it's about time we get back to the frog boss. Here he is in all his temporary art glory. One of the attacks the frog will do is shoot his tongue out towards the player. Obviously, this cannot be done without a tongue. So here it is. Currently, it follows the player's exact position for testing, but that will be changed later. Five more days remain and I'm starting to get a little worried about finishing in time. I still need to finish the frog boss consisting of art, attacks, and movement, add sound effects, add a tutorial, add a title screen, and name the game. The current working title is Remote Control Shuriken. The frog boss is up first so let's jump right into it, pun intended. The first thing to work on is his ability to jump towards the player. The frog is made up of 4 to 6 sprites so I need to move and set them accordingly. Here are all of the directions he can face. Whoa, wait, that's not right. After what has felt like way too long, the frog has now the correct animation and actually hops around. And he's done. Here's how he turned out. At this point, it seems like only art changes remain. Let's get going. Start with the tutorial. This is perfect. I'm just kidding. Here's the final tutorial. 
Not particularly exciting, but I think it explains enough. And here's the title screen. Again, not my best work, but it'll have to do. The only thing still missing is music. I had reached out to my Game Boy composer around day four with some short notice work. Luckily, he was free and was able to create two music tracks and a custom wind jingle. I'll play them alongside the gameplay in a moment. The game is now done. You can play it yourself over at itch.io. I'd love to hear your feedback. Anyways, here's the gameplay montage. Enjoy, and I'll catch you guys next time. Adios.